Hey guys, it's Sharika. Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I would love to have you. So today we have some king crab and we have... Tony. <laughs> so we're going to get right into it. Let's say grace. Amen. Hey y'all. What's up y'all? What you got to say to them, Tony? What's up y'all? How y'all been? Uh, that's it. I don't got much to say. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we gonna put this? On the ground. Okay, we're gonna put it on the ground. Alright, and we working with one pair of scissors over here, y'all. Yep. Today's drink, this is a mocktail. I use non-alcoholic tequila. I'll pop up a picture right here so you guys can see it. It's really good, and I just use some strawberry daiquiri mix. So this is just a strawberry, a version strawberry daiquiri. Okay. Okay. Let's get it. And we working with one pair of scissors, like I said. So these are some big boys, y'all look. So I do have a story time now. The story is pretty long, so I'm gonna try to shorten it up as much as I can. As much as possible. <laughs> So, it was this college girl. Her name was Mia. She lived in Orlando, but she was from Fort Lauderdale. Broward County. Here we go. Broward County, y'all. Broward County. So, she also had a job. She worked for the apartment complex that she lived in. Well, the apartment complex that she lived in, she had a dude that had a crush on her. Look at this meat. So it was a maintenance dude that worked there. He was 27. And again, she's 19. So one weekend, she called her family and she asked them if they could come and see her for the weekend, spend time with her for the weekend, whatever. But nobody was able to make it that weekend. So she was like, okay, she'll just fly to see them and spend the weekend there. Yeah. So she following up with her family throughout the day. And she said, okay, I'm getting ready to call the Uber and go to the airport. Hours and hours went by. They haven't heard from her. So the grandma was calling her, the aunties was calling her. Nobody can get in contact with her, which wasn't like her because she was really close to her family. So even if, you know, she had to pick up the phone and say, I'll call y'all right back, I'm a little busy. That's how it was. Like she would never just not answer her phone. So this crab was so good. You like the flavor? Yeah, it's really good. Mm -hmm. So the grandma, ended up going to the airport to see if she came if she got off the plane and she never did so she called the police she was telling the police i don't feel like you know i feel like something is wrong because you know this is not like her and she was supposed to be on that plane and she's <clears throat> not so now the family like something going on something wrong we gonna hop on the plane to orlando they called first, remember? What? They called first to ask for a wellness check. Oh, yeah. Well, when they were there? Because the cousin was there, remember? Yeah, they called to ask for a wellness check first. Then they went down there. But they didn't get the results that they ran there. Remember, the cousin showed up when the police came I don't want to tell the story, but the cousin came up after the police came out looked. Yeah, so they came to Orlando. The police was there. The police officer was checking around, you know, knocking on the door, no answer. And her bedroom door or her bedroom window was open. So 
He looking in there. He's like, you know, it don't look like anything has been messed up. Like it's pretty neat, whatever. So the cousin come over there and she's like asking him, asking a police officer, like, what did you see? Like, do you see her luggage? Do you see, like she had this teddy bear that she always traveled with, but she also kept it on her bed when she was at home. So the officer said he didn't remember. So the next morning, everybody was there. Her whole family was there. So we're gonna do their own investigation on this case to try to find out where Mia is. So, hold on, let me get this meat out of here. You were all about the cousin, the, the security coming. I said I would, because remember the story no, is so long, so I'm not gonna put every single thing. I told you that ain't how I do my stories. I have to skip over a little <laughs> something, so. All right. So girl, and y'all know I skip over stuff. Cause the, the story was long. Yes, it was. So, the whole family, the mama, the daddy, the cousin, auntie, grandma, they all at the office talking to the people, getting as much information as they can. And they end up going to the apartment and going inside. They all put on gloves, went inside, and they were saying like things were just out of order and that's not like her. That's not like Mia because she make up her bed. You know, she don't leave mess around. They found like some of her jewelry on the floor broke. The luggage that she was supposed to take was still against the wall with her two cell phones. Everything. So they knew something wasn't right. Yo, her family was like a, a detective family. Yeah, they. I mean, they were on it. Like and they, they were on it. And they got in good with the uh, security guard. He helped them out a lot in this story also, y'all. Yeah. So... The police were the ones that they were working with. Well, they couldn't put the missing report out until, what, was it the next day or like two days later? They said uh, she had been missing for at least like two days or something. Yeah, like two days. So, while they're at the office, you know, talking to the maintenance people after, after leaving the apartment and seeing that, you know, something was wrong because, like I said, Stuff just wasn't in order. Her bed was pushed out of the way. It was a little bit of blood on the pillow. They seen like her necklace had been popped. So it was some kind of struggle in the apartment. <clears throat> so while you're talking to the people in the office, a guy walks in. <clears throat> this dude name was Armando. So he was just like, you know, him and Mia were good friends. But he hadn't spoken to her in two weeks. Yeah. But he was the maintenance guy also. And they work together. Yeah, because she worked. she worked in the office and he's the maintenance guy. But again, he had a crush on her. But the family already knew exactly who he was when he walked in because she was really close to her family. So she would always send them messages that she he was sending her. Just like expressing his love. And she would always blow him off and he would get pissed off about it. So, the dad talking to him like, you know, when the last time you seen my daughter, when the last time y'all spoke, he was like, well, I haven't spoken to her in like two weeks. So, the daddy was like, okay, but you're the maintenance guy. You haven't had to do any work in her apartment. Because, of course, he has the master key to all the apartments in the complex. So he was like, well, I did have to take a blower to her apartment, but every apartment had some issues with some leaks. So they go outside. By this time, the police is there. So they just catching him in multiple lies because he had just said that he hadn't seen her in two weeks. So he was like, uh, you know, I don't talk to her. I don't have her number. So the mom was like, okay, you saying you don't have her number, but she showed us text messages where you keep texting her. Yep. And not only that, you cashed out her $600. Why would you cash out her $600? The same week. The same week. Yeah. So he was like, that was a long time ago. The mom was like, I'm in her cash out right now. Like you just did that this week, but she didn't um, accept the money yeah, because 
Go ahead, go ahead. She sends everything to her um, her family, close friends, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Stuff that's weird, she sends it to her folks. Mm-hmm. And uh, also during this time, also the security guard is there, and he trying to the um the guy he's trying to convince them that he's such a good guy and all that. And the maintenance guy is like, nah, you ain't no good guy. That ain't what we heard about you. Yeah, you're Did not that. a good guy. The security guy was saying that too. Remember? Yeah, because he work out there. Mm-hmm. So they catching them in the lie. The cop is just standing there, just not saying anything. Yeah, they dropped the ball, y'all. Yeah, they really did. But the like I said, the family, they was on top of it. Yeah. So they're just standing there. They questioning them. They read through the text messages. They got all of that. The cop that was there, he never searched um, Armando's car. They ended up leaving. The police and Armando ended up leaving, going to check something in the maintenance room. Like the maintenance room. Came back, Armando went his way, the cop went their way, whatever. So then that's when the family called down to the police station to see if, you know, they had already filed the missing report because they felt like it was time to do that because their daughter was definitely missing. So they went ahead and did that, but there was no detective there to be assigned assigned to the case. Over the weekend. Yeah, because it was over the weekend. So they wouldn't be back until Monday. Which sucked. Okay. So, while the family was doing their own investigation, they also noticed that her her uh, windows was had been unlocked from the outside. Well, somebody so, had removed the um, cause she had locks on all her windows. She put them on there cause she was on the first floor. Mm-hmm. So she put locks on her windows. So they they had seen that obviously somebody had. Took them off from the inside because mm-hmm. they locked from the inside. So y'all, right? So somebody, somebody didn't slip. Mm-hmm. And went in there and done their thing. Right. So Armando left. Nobody know where he's at. They talking to the maintenance people. They asking him, okay, well, when did he last have the fob? Asking the people in the office when the last time he had the fob for the like the master key for all the apartments. And they told him this, that, and the third. So once the family found out, let me hold the key, the uh, so I'm about to say the key. Let me give you he this had it over the weekend. One. Yeah, so once they found out he was that- He duty guy for the weekend. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Once they found out that he was the on duty guy for the weekend, he had the fob, and he was doing all the thing. He was going everywhere. Yeah, something like that. But that ain't the part that I don't get mad at. So once they found out that the officer, the detective, wasn't going to be assigned the case, they said, "Okay, they gonna get on it themselves." So she had overheard Armando tell the officer his address. So they went over there and just was, you know. Scoping the scene. Scoping the scene, trying to see what they can find out. So in they the, end up. Oh my I'm about to say in the cut. <laughs> yes, in the cut. So they find out, they see him. So when they see him getting out of his car, he, when they see him getting out of his car, he has gloves. And then they're like, okay, what else he has? And they recording the whole thing. Like they, I'm telling you, the family was on it. Like the family was, they had a whole family of detectives. They was on it. Go oh, I just dropped a the big. They started doing their own investigation. Yeah. I thought I dropped a big piece of meat right in the bowl. So they seen that he had gloves. And then they was like, okay, what else is that in his hand? It was the grandma's blanket, yeah. which belongs to Mia. So they're like, oh my gosh, they start panicking. They like, call the police, call the police. So he got, he went into the apartment, came back out and drove off. So he saw them. So some guy, some random guy walked up, walked up to their car and was telling them to get out of the car. So they're like, I'm not getting out of the car. So then it was like, turn off the, the truck and get out of the car. So. They, you know, that kind of scared them a little bit, and then the guy ended up walking off. By this time, I think the detective, oh no, they just put, because it was officers coming out there to the apartment after they said, okay, I found a blanket, whatever. Armando ended up coming back to the apartment and told them, okay, yeah, y'all could go ahead and check my apartment, right? 
and a cop accompanied them while they were checking the apartment to look for what they just saw him pull out of their car, out of his car. But when they went in there, he didn't have the blanket, he didn't have the gloves. Like he, when he drove off, he probably got rid of it. So, by this time, I'm assuming the information that they showed the cops that was enough to put out a search warrant, but nobody knew where Armando was. He had left again, yeah. Yeah, he had left again. So a few days passed. You know, they talking to the apartment people, everybody putting two two and two together. They like, yeah, he was the last one with the fob. Um, the time stamp that when her door was open, um, and then the time stamp well, her door was open before she came. And then the time stamp from when she got off work. Yeah. So he basically went in her apartment and waited for her. Then he got footage of him riding by the um, you know, the car that the apartments be having. Mm -hmm. and then they had they they got her on camera going to her apartment. Yeah. Yep. So a few days later, Amando's body was found. He had killed himself. Because the pressure was on. Like, they had so much evidence against him. Because, like I said, the family, they were on it. They were, they did a really good job. <laughs> like, a really good job. So, now, you know, they still don't know where Mia is. So, they did a search. And how many days? Maybe two days after they found Armando body. I think they found him five, 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 five days after they found him or Something like that. Yeah. Five days. Put something over her mouth. Bound her legs and her hands. And her body was already like decomposed. They found her skeletal remains. Mm -hmm. Yep. So she was basically decomposed and stuff like that. Yeah. So they couldn't even like uh, find out her I cause of death. Mm -hmm. Because she was, um, she had been gone so long. Mm -hmm. And her body had... Uh, whatever you call it. Decomposed. Yeah, decomposed so much, but they found her. They knew it was her because she had her necklace. Yeah. That said me. Her uh, necklace, her wallet, her purse. Yeah, she had all of her tongues on her. Mm -hmm. But they didn't give any details on like, how she died. How she died, yeah. yeah. What he did to like, her. What he did to her, but he knew they was coming. There was a. Uh, it was on. Yeah, if the police had did, did what they were supposed to do. And investigated good, like the family did. The family did a great job. They did as much as they yeah, could. Like so, it was nothing more that they could. Like they could have arrested him if they was the police. Yeah, because the security guard that was on um, on duty that day, he even took it upon himself to take up fingerprints from off of the window and try to get it to the police, but the police wouldn't take it. They was like, "It's not a high case like that." So the family ended up. Um, filing a lawsuit against the apartment complex and the police department, but they didn't tell us the outcome of that. So it was crazy. I'll link the story in the description box. Ooh, so that's me. a juicy piece. Yeah. This is what I miss. But y'all, the story was so long. It was long, but it was, it was good. A long story, but yeah, it's, it was good. But if y'all, when y'all watch it, y'all will see how the family just. They jump on it quick. Yeah, for real. So, like they be watching goddamn on stories about it, mm -hmm. stuff like that, forensic. And it's good that you know she wasn't like you know how some young girls try to be so private and they don't. But see, they knew everything. They had already knew exactly who he was. She wasn't leading him on. They had never been intimate at all. She always told him, you know, she just wanted to be friends. He would send her these long text messages just saying, you know, getting mad at her because she wouldn't respond to his messages, but then she'll be on Instagram. Like he was just he was really stalking this girl. He really was. <clears throat> and she shared that with her family and stuff. Now I wonder why the apartments didn't do nothing about it because she was close with some of the some of her coworkers and she even said that she shared that in a group chat. Some of the messages and stuff, but he still. Mm. Maybe that's part of the lawsuit. Yeah, it's crazy. And depending on whoever the HR department is, if they got one, mm -hmm. 
Alright, it's on file that she complained. I don't know. Did she complain to the apartment complex? So via well, just text messages. And stuff. Well, she just was saying that she shared some of the messages in a group chat with her some of her coworkers. Oh, okay. So I don't know why nothing was ever done there. And then like when the manager lady was putting two and two together and looking at all the records and then she just started crying like, Oh my god, I don't know how I let this happen and it was a mess. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at eating pretty and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys. Peace out.